understand. Now I need somebody. Uh, uh, let's see. I need a tall person. Is anybody here seven feet? Can you come help me here? You look tall. Come. I mean you, man. You should be glad to come. I'm about to make you God. Stand behind them, please. Well, you ain't quite. Anyhow. You, you, you survive. Now, the male came out of who? God. God is responsible for creating the male. But watch this. Then God created the female. I need a, a lady, please. Can I have a lady? If you want to be on TV, here's your chance. Come on, girl. Thank you very much. She's pretty too, boy, I tell you. Stand in front of him. Stand in the front of him. That's good. All right. So now we have the female coming out of the male. Now, remember, Christ's answer was, to have a good marriage, you got to go back to the beginning. So you got to study what a male is like in the beginning, and you got to study what a female is like in the beginning, and once you can find that these two qualify by that criteria, then that marriage will work. Hmm. So before you marry someone, you've got to check them against the checklist of the beginning. <laughs> so don't just marry anybody. Make sure you marry the right ingredients. What Christ was saying was, divorce is not your problem. The problem is the material that you use for the marriage ain't no good. See, you can't get a divorce unless you were married. And you can't get married unless there were two individuals. And you can't get married unless there was one individual. In other words, it begins with the one, and then it, be, then it produces the other, and then you have the two. Now I need a, a, a male and female. Can I have a male and female? Can you come? Yeah, come on down here. Give a good hand to our pianist, boy. He's all right, I tell you. Turn around and step right there. Stand next to him, please. I want to show you all something now. Now, I want you to see how this is building. We got God who produced Adam, the male, who produced Eve, the woman. So God is the father of the male. The male is the father of the female. And when you put them two together, you, you produce a marriage. So marriage is when those two come together and they are the right ingredients. I'm going to show you why family is the key to the whole thing. Now... What kind of male is the beginning male? Let's write down the things we learned yesterday. Number one, the first thing about the first male is that he had a clear self-image. He knew he was the image of God. That means you don't want to marry a man who's still trying to be like other people. You want to marry a man who knows who he is. He knows his self-image. He doesn't need anyone's approval to feel important. He doesn't try to dress like other people and wear everybody's style. He doesn't go around trying to buy Nikes and trying to be Tommy Hilfiger, trying to wear, you know, Calvin Klein, and he's trying to be somebody else, trying to fix his hair like other people, and trying to be a rapper or trying to be cool. He wants somebody who knows he's somebody without anybody being anybody. You want a man whose self-confidence and self-image is in God, not in any style or any role model somewhere else. Second thing about this man is that God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. The word Eden means presence. Please get that book on praise and worship to understand what that word means, Eden. So the first thing is the man has a good clear image, self-image. Secondly, he is where? In the presence of God. The third thing about the male man that's important is that the male man was given the first command, and that is work. So you want a male man who is working and loves to work. You meet him working. The fourth thing about the male man, in Genesis chapter 1, and chapter 2 rather, you find that this man, in verse 15, God secondly told him to cultivate. That means you need a male man who can cultivate you. To cultivate means to bring the best out of, to develop you, to advance you. Don't marry a man who cannot improve you. I've met ladies who've got a good job, good education, got a nice car, a nice apartment, got her own life going together, and then she marries a bum. She marries a guy who drives her car, eats her food, watches her television, sleeps in her apartment while she's out to work. That's not a woman, that's a fool. 
You don't marry a man who decreases your value. You want to marry a guy who will increase and improve your value. Some of you ladies get so desperate because you're 30. You grab anything that comes along in the pants and destroy your quality life. The fifth thing that this man is, Genesis 2.15, God told the man to guard the garden. That means a true male is a protector. If a man can't protect you, he's not deserving of being your husband. A true male protects females. He doesn't use his strength to abuse them and hurt them and domestically violate them. He doesn't rape them. He doesn't cause date rape or beat his wife or harass his children or commit incest on his little girl or sodomize his son. That's not a real man. Fire this tape for someone you know. A real man protects everything under his care. As a matter of fact, the best thing that's supposed to be heard by a man when he comes home is when his wife says, Daddy's home now. Everything's okay. The most beautiful thing a child should say to a father is, My daddy's home now. You touch me, he'll kill you. That's what a child needs to say and a mother needs to say about her husband. She's supposed to be able to say, My, my warrior in shining armor is here. My protector has arrived. He's a guard. And then number six, the real man... Is the man who God says, do not touch the tree. This is my command. That's found in verse 17 of Genesis 2. In other words, the, the male was given the word of God, not the female. Which means that the male was designed by God to be the teacher of the word, one who keeps the word. And that means the male is supposed to be the one who knows the word, the commandments of God to communicate to his family. That means a real man knows this book called the Bible back to front. Don't marry a man who can't teach you the word. And some of y'all is too late. There are men who know the name of everybody on the soccer team but can't list the disciples. They know the score of every game the last year but don't know the chapters in Abaca. They spend hours watching television football, but spend no hours in the Word of God. That's not a good man to marry. I'm going to preach it, baby. Men, you've got to be like Adam if you want to guarantee a good home. So he must be aware of his image in God. He must be in the presence of God. Love to be in the presence of God. Don't marry a man that you got to drag to church. Don't marry a man that you got to encourage to have devotions in the home. Don't marry a man who stands up at his arms for while everybody is worshiping. Don't marry a cool fool. Somebody's just cool, you know. Worship is for women, man. I'm cool, man. I ain't gonna stop me no fool, man. I'm a brother, man. I'm cool. No, you're a fool, man. If you study the Word of God, all the priests, all the priests who worship were male. 